love you, Lord, we love you. Father, we give you all the glory. You are my rock, my strength, and my trust. In you I live and move and have my feet. You are my shelter, my peace, and my shield. You are my everything. You are worthy to be praised. You are my rock, my strength, and my Apologies live, and we're so glad to have this program today. This is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice and be glad in it. We're so glad to come on board today to discuss very important issue. Now, if you're joining us for the very first time, this is the season Apologies Live. This is where we talk about the issue of related to Christianity, talking about the defense of the Christian faith, making a clarification of the Christian faith, and also reaching out to those who are not Christians as well, especially the Muslims. All right, so um, for the past um, three um, about three or four weeks now, okay, so principally three weeks, uh, we, we've been talking about a particular episode, all right? We've been talking about a particular episode, and incidentally, uh, the episode that we started talking about, which is actually the global Islamization agenda, um, started about three weeks ago, and that is before uh, the clean of the Bora. That is the young lady who was actually killed at Sokoto, you know, by uh, schoolmates, all right? So we, we started the episode before that incident, all right? Now, of course, we never knew that things like that is going to happen. We never knew that, um, you know, that occurrence will actually take place. But then we started with this particular episode, and we've done the first one. We've done the second one. This is the part three of the episode. This is the last part of the episode. And the first two episodes have been revealing so far. Now, we'll be taking a look at the global, uh, you know, Islamization agenda. We'll take a look at this from the Quran and also from the Adit, that is the Islamic tradition. So we're not just saying things um, out of the, we're not bringing things out of the thin air, we're not just saying things because we want to say them, but as we're bringing it out, we're also showing evidence, uh, you know, to actually support what we're talking about. And we'll be so happy, in fact, we're so glad to have joining us in the studio, taking us on this particular journey, our dear brother, all the way from Ghana, uh, Brad. Dominic Akonsa is the one that has been helping us unpacking this particular topic of discussion to us 
and also for us as well. By the way, Baraponsa is actually uh, the team leader of an apologetic team right there in Ghana. It is actually known as Team Truth Exposed, you know, uh, Apologetic Ministry. All right, so that's actually you know the the ministry that uh, our dear brother has actually been heading and been doing a whole lot of work. Baraponsa has been debating a lot of Muslims right there in Ghana. He's been giving talks, speeches. You know, um, in conferences and also, you know, in Bible study, especially as to the defense of the Christian faith and also to see how we can reach out to Muslims as well. So joining us today for the last part, yeah, um, that is our dear brother, uh, Bra Akonsa. So, Bra Akonsa, how are you doing today? It's nice having you um, in the studio again. <laughs> okay, so you are, you are muted at this point in time. You, you want to unmute yourself, Bra Akonsa. Yeah, by the grace of God, very clearly, I'm doing well. And you? I'm good. I'm good, Raponsa. It's nice hearing from you. And um, I believe, yeah, this is the last part of the program. But I also yeah. believe that it's, it's going to be revealing just as we have the two episodes so far. So, Raponsa, yeah, we, we talked about the very first episode, the second episode. We've seen uh, a couple of things, how this whole thing gets started, how it started, you know, right from the time of Muhammad, um, how it started um, during the time of the Caliphate, that's the, you know, the people that took after Muhammad, and they were looking at how we started in the modern time. So in, in just one minute, okay, uh, for those who are joining us for the very first time, it's just one minute, uh, because I've seen a couple of comments. The Muslims are actually saying, well, you guys are just talking hail of Islam. You're attacking Islam. Sometimes I receive messages from Muslims say, why are you attacking Islam and all that? So, bro, I just wanted to say in one minute, why are we discussing this? Why are we talking about the global uh, you know, um, Islamization agenda of Islam. Why are we even discussing this in the very first place? Just for one minute, uh, for those who are joining us for the very first time, and also to serve as a refresher uh, for those who have been following us for a particular period of time now. Okay, thanks so much, Brother Corridy, for the question. Uh, if you are watching us for the first time, we will be able to go and watch the first, and the, the first part and the second part. In the first part, we look at the uh, the basis for this agenda, and in the second part, which was the last week Sunday, we looked at the basis of uh, uh, how this agenda was achieved in the past by the Islamists or by the Muslims. So back to the question, why are we even discussing this? We are discussing this because this agenda is a big threat to both Christians and even those who are not Christians. Uh, if you are not a Muslim, you this topic should be a concern to you because once this agenda materializes, any community anywhere in the world where this agenda becomes uh, materialized, uh, if you are not a Muslim, you don't have uh, your, your, your safety. That's why we need to discuss this agenda. For us to appreciate what Islam stands for, then for us to even know as Christians how to confront Islam, how we should view Muslims, how we should think of the Islamic faith. So we are basically discussing this for us to have a very good knowledge about Islam and also know how to relate with uh, our dear Muslims who are in our community so that we can live in peace, of course. So that is the purpose for this discussion. Amen. Thank you very much for that, um, Braconsa. So, without much ado, uh, folks, I just want to inform you that um, Braconsa is going to be having his presentation, but then you're going to be having the opportunity to ask questions as well. So, if you have questions for our dear brother Braconsa, I wanted to make sure that you note your question during his presentation so that when he's done with the presentation, we can begin to take our questions, you know, one after the other. Uh, we might not be doing the phone calls today. Um, you can just put in your question in the comment section. All right. So here's what you do. If you want to ask a question, here's what you do. Uh, you type in question, capital letter. We want to make sure that the question is different from the comment. So you type question, capital letter. So once you type the question, capital letter, then let it be followed by your question. That is how we can tell that this is a question and not a general comment in the comment section. All right. So Barack Monsa, um, over to you right now. Let's, let's have you for uh, the last part of this presentation. Okay. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Wherever you are watching me in the world, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's always a pleasure to have this time with you to share what the Lord has given me with you, uh, all with the intention of helping each one of us to understand what 
uh, Christianity is and how as Christians we are to relate uh, uh, with our Muslim brothers and sisters. Remember, the purpose of this discussion is not for you, a Christian, to hate the Muslim. Our, our purpose is to help you understand the Islamic faith so that we can live in peace with even Muslims, as the Lord commands us in the Bible. Now, the topic uh, for this discussion is the worldwide globalization agenda. We've explained what this agenda is. This agenda is that Islam must dominate the whole world. Islam must, of course, dominate the whole world. So we saw that the Islamic faith is not just a religion. The Islamic faith is a political system too. So it's a religio-political system that want to dominate the whole world. Every system must uh, submit to Islam. And we, we went through the scriptures of Islam, the Quran and the Sahih Hadith. And we saw that this agenda is clearly stated in the Quran. So uh, you watch the first part. We give, out, we give out all these references. And one key test that we want you to have in mind is Quran chapter 9, verse 33. Quran chapter 9, verse 33, where the Quran says that it is he, Allah, who has sent Muhammad with guidance and the religion of truth, Islam, to proclaim it over all religion. So this is the, the Quranic basis for this Islamization or agenda, that Islam must dominate. Islam must take over all religion, including Christianity. So if you're not a Muslim, you are targeted by, by, by the Islamists. And the purpose of Islam is to take over the whole world. Whatever country that you are living in, where we have democracy, Islam is in that country with the one who wants to take over that country or territory for Allah. The whole world must be, must be governed uh, with the Sharia law. So that is, the, the, that is what all this topic that we are discussing is about. The worldwide Islamization agenda is that Islam must dominate and rule the whole world. The Quran and the Islamic scriptures should be the constitution for the world. Now, we saw last from last week Islamization effort in the past, effort that Muslims made in the past to achieve or to work out this agenda. And we started with Muhammad. We saw Muhammad in his lifetime did so many uh, jihad, all with the intention or all with the purpose of spreading Islam. And we saw that Bible lands like Syria, Palestine, North Africa, uh, all fall to Islam, Asia Minor or Turkey, all these lands which we read about in the Bible, which were lands uh, dominated by Christians and Jews, and other uh, people were taken over were taken over by Islam through series of jihad by the Muslims from the year 632 that Muhammad died up to the year 1924 when uh, uh, the modern Turkey was formed. We, we we had about five Islamic empires. The 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 Uma, uh, the the the, the, the Rashidun Caliphate or the Empire, the Umayyad Caliphate or the Empire, the Abbasid Caliphate, the Fatimid Caliphate, and the Ottoman Caliphate or Empire. All these Islamic empires, through se se series of jihad, took over all these ancient Judeo-Christian lands: Turkey, uh, Antioch, Nicaea, Constantinople, Alexandria, Carthage. All these lands, which were big centers of Christianity and Judaism were taken over by what? Islam. So we promise that in our final part today, uh, we are going to look at Islamization efforts in our modern times, effort that Muslims are making to Islamize the whole world, whatever country that Islam is, Muslims are, effort that Muslims are making today to ensure that Islam finally take over that country or village or community for, for, for Allah. So these are what we are going to discuss today. So it's not just in the ancient time that Muhammad and the Muslims used jihad to take over many lands. Today, Muslims are seriously working out this agenda to ensure that every country that we have Islam there, we have Muslim there, Islam must take over that community or that country. So let's uh, look at some of these uh, uh, strategies that the Muslims are using to ensure that Islam, the promise of Allah in Surah Tawbah, Ayat 33, is fulfilled. So on the first on our uh, the first on our list is uh, sponsoring of jihadist organization to implement Sharia by the Arab world. So that is Islamization effort in modern times. Sponsoring of jihadist organizations to implement Sharia by the Arab world. And I think this is not a secret. This is an open secret that 
most of the Arab countries are sponsoring terrorists. Most of the Arab countries are sponsoring terrorists. And what are some of these terrorists that we are talking about? They are talking about ISIS. We are talking, we are talking about ISIS here. And recently, we, we have had a branch of this ISIS group in West Africa known as ESWAP, Islamic State West African Province. And they are operating right now in countries like uh, uh, Niger, uh, Mali, Burkina Faso, uh, part of Nigeria. And recently, they have uh, registered their presence in Togo, Burkina Faso, and even Cote d'Ivoire. As we speak now, Ghana is the only country that these Islamists are yet to uh, 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 register their presence in or to start their operation in. So this jihadist organization are all working to ensure that this Islam this Islamization agenda comes to pass. So we have organizations like ISIS. Formerly, we, we, we only heard about them in Syria and, 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 and Lebanon and Iraq. But right now, this organization have had their presence here in West Africa. We have Boko Haram in Nigeria. Boko Haram, since 2009 or so, this Boko Haram has been terrorizing a lot of people in Nigeria, all because they want Islam, they want Sharia in that part of what, Nigeria, and not just that part of Nigeria, but all every part of Nigeria, this Boko Haram people want Nigeria to go for Sharia. Then we have Al Shabaab in, uh, in Somalia and that part of Africa. We had uh, Al Qaeda, we had uh, 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 Hamas, the Islamic Jihad. All these organizations are working in our world today to ensure that Islam is promoted, Sharia becomes the order of the day. And sometimes one wonders how did these people get their funding? Where do they get their weapons? Because look at Nigeria, for instance. The whole Nigeria army cannot defeat Boko Haram. Where do these people get their weapons from? Who and who are sponsoring these people? Like ISIS, the whole Western army, France, US, Germany, they cannot defeat ISIS. And still, so these people are operating. Why? Where are these people getting their support and funding from? Where are they getting the weapons from? It is one thing. These Arab countries that we see, like Saudi, Iran, Turkey, all these, Qatar, all these countries are secret sponsors of these terrorists. And it, it just came out uh, in some times ago that countries like uh, take, uh, uh, Turkey and, 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 and Qatar are all sponsoring these terrorists. So all these people, the so-called peaceful Muslims that we, we, we have in the world, these people secretly sponsor these terrorists to spread this Islamic agenda, to make sure Islam take over those countries, those countries that we have democracy, they want Islam, the Sharia to be there. Even we have some countries in West Africa that is Muslim majority, but they are not going for Sharia. They are using Western democracy. And these terrorists are sponsored by these Islamic or Arab countries to ensure that Sharia replaces what democracy. So this is what is happening over here in West Africa, and not just West Africa, almost the whole world. Now go to uh, the Middle East, go to uh, uh, America, go to UK. You see that these jihadists have registered their presence. The day in and day out, these terrorists are terrorizing people, especially Christians, those uh, who are not Muslims. They are killing people indiscriminately to ensure that this agenda is what fulfilled. So this is what is happening in today's world. So. Just as in the ancient times, many jihad were fought by the Muslims. Today, we have this terrorist organization who are also waging out jihad to ensure that the order of Allah or the command of Allah or the, the, the purpose of Islam comes to what? Pass. Now, beside this jihadist organization or Islamist organization, another strategy that Muslims are using today is massive migration of Muslims to non Islamic countries. Massive migration of Muslims to non Islamic countries. Now look at what is happening to Europe. The wars that we have in Syria, the wars that we have in Libya, the Arab countries have opened their borders. Turkey, for instance, opened their borders so that people can move from Turkey to Greece. And this goes over so many uh, issues between the two countries. Now go to Germany. People, people from Pakistan, Libya, people from Afghanistan are just migrating to these European countries. 
And sometimes you may think that, oh, these people just want better life. No, it's just a strategy. Why is it that when uh, these people want to run to any kind, they don't, they don't go to the Islamic countries, they don't go to Saudi Arabia, they don't go to Iran, but they want to go to Europe with one purpose. They want to take over these lands just by migration alone. These people will conquer these uh, European countries because once this migration comes to pass and uh, you see, they get more Muslim population, a time will come that the Muslims will outnumber the non-Muslims and Islam will take over those countries. And that's exactly what Muhammad used in the past. When he was persecuted in Mecca, he migrated from Mecca to Yatrib and later when he got more people, he took over the land Yatrib and he renamed the, the city as Medina. So that is one of the strategies, migration into non-Muslim countries. And not just well, uh, Europe, come to even West Africa here, Ghana here, for instance, come and see the, the, the rate at which Muslims from Niger, Mali, and Burkina are migrating to Ghana like never before. And sometimes we and Muslims think, oh, this is just normal way, they just want better life. But anytime these people come down to our country, they just want to live in one place called Zongos. They don't want any people to mingle with them. They just want to create their own society. They want to have their own chief. And by and by, they take over the country or the community. So, Brother Kolo, they want to come to Ghana here. There are some places in Ghana or in Accra here that is totally Islam. Like, it's complete Muslim community. Seriously. A, a Christian can't even enter there. Like, a Christian church can't go there to do maybe crusade or public preaching or any other religious activity. Mm. Like, places in, Ghana. in Ghana. Places in Accra here, like Nima, like Mamubi, and those Ashyama, these communities almost have been Islamized. Almost 99% or 100% Islam. We have very, you may see some Christians in those areas, but the Christians, they are very, very small. And these people have taken over these communities. And by extension, this is what they want for the whole of the country. So, migration. And in fact, most of the Muslims here in Ghana, they are not Ghanaians by birth. They migrated from other countries to Ghana and they just come and they use our system, our freedom, our, our openness, and they become Ghanaians by means of the naturalize or they stay here for a long time and they become citizens. And by the time you realize they take over the land and they, cl they claim to be the indigenous of the land, and those who were the rare owners of the land, so this is one of the ways Islam is used to dominate the world. So go to countries like Germany, uh, how their president or chancellor opened their borders, and in just one year, over one million Muslims entered Germany. And all these things uh, are, are going to affect the country in the long run because uh, now Europe. Many countries in Europe are not safe, are no longer safe because of these people that they allow them to enter the country. Jihadis, all these people who have been radicalized enter the country and they tend to make the country very, very hot, unsafe. Countries in Europe that have uh, closed their borders to these, these Muslims are quite safe. Countries like Poland, I've, uh, I listened to what they are foreign minister, and I like the man. The man actually said, we we'll never allow these people to enter their country. And when we go to Europe today, Poland is one of the safest countries in North oh. Europe because they are straight oh. information oh. law. It's not evil for, uh, it's not bad for people to migrate to a country. But when you see that these people have an agenda, that once you allow these people to enter a country, once you get about 10% or 5% of them in your country or in your, uh, of your population, the country becomes no longer out safe now beside this migration let's look at another, uh, other things that these people are doing to islamize the world or their com communities or countries we have uh infiltration of the political and educational systems in an islamic countries and now let me i'll use my country here for, for uh, as an example ghana here now we have two major parties in ghana ndc that's the national democratic congress and mpp the new patriotic party these two major parties um are highly uh, populated by 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 non-Muslim, but of late, the of late Muslims have get getting more people or gurus in these parties. Now our vice president is a Muslim, and now all indication point to the fact that the 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 the, the incumbent party want to bring him as the as a presidential candidate in the 2024 election. 
And you see many Christians who have even started campaigning for him to be the president. You see? So Muslims are entering our politics. Both the parties, the two main parties, you now have a lot of Muslim politicians, MPs in parliament. Now education system. We come to Ghana here. And we have... <laughs> We have, uh, we have, we have, we have uh, 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 our whole educational system that tends to favor Muslims or Islam. Now you have, we have missionary schools in Ghana here. Now these missionary schools, you just go there. It's just the name that is on it that it is a mission school, but there is nothing that shows that this is actually a, a Christian missionary or school. But when you come to the Islamic side, the Muslims have worked assiduously so that so we have teachers who are teaching Arabic in Muslim schools and government pays them uh, to teach Arabic. But brother Kolo, when you come to West Africa here, our main language, uh, we have English and French. So none of the countries in West Africa has uh, Arabic as uh, an official language. But come to our country here, Arabic is now taught in Muslim schools. And even that Arabic is not Arabic that they speak in Saudi Arabia. That Arabic that they teach is that Arabic that is spoken uh, that's the Quranic Arabic, which is not the modern day Arabic, and it's what people uh people are taught in the Islamic or schools, and government pays them. Government pays them. So in our education system and in our political system, Islam is even infiltrating. Now, when you go to the uh, the missionary schools, like Christian missionary schools, now Muslims are come, uh, come saying that the Muslims should be allowed to practice their religion in those Christian schools, like the issue of hijab last year came about. Uh, in Ghana here, in one of the mission schools in Cape Coast, uh, Wesley Girls Senior High School, a Methodist school, where one lady was denied uh, uh, the opportunity to fast in the school. And now Muslims are campaigning. The issue of hijab, Muslims are now campaigning. And because of politics, our institutions are trying to start calm, give will for the Muslims to practice their religion even in Christian schools. Meanwhile, the missionary schools or the Christian schools have their own laws that if you want to, if you are not willing to go by these laws, find a different school to attend. But these people will attend the school. Now, when they come, then they will try to use that system to fight for their right in that school. So they, they, they want to even register their presence in Christian and well-known Christian missionary hall schools that is known to be a Christian institution. When Muslims enter this community or this institution, they want to use their, our freedom or our constitution to fight for their own right in this. So this one way Islam is us, infiltrating our educational system and even our political heart system. The next one, let's look at the next issue. Um, then building of majestic masjids in non-Islamic countries. Come to Ghana here, Accra, take the Turkish government sponsored the building of one uh, one biggest mosque in Ghana, known as the, the Central Mosque, very majestic mosque founded by the Turkish government. So I'm here to see a, 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 a country in the West that is sponsoring the building, a government in the world that is sponsoring the building of a, a church in a country. I'm here to see that in Nigeria, that a whole American government is going is sponsoring a, a, a building of a church in Nigeria or a whole Germany government or uh, a French government is sponsoring the burden of a Catholic cathedral in maybe Ghana or maybe in another country. You never see that. But you see a whole Islamic country like Turkey, Saudi, sponsoring the burden of what? Moses in what? Non Islamic countries. This is one way Muslims are trying to register their presence that Islam is coming to take over the country. Then the next issue is discouragement of marriage between Muslim women and Muslim men. This is an open, uh, this is not something unique. Uh, it goes on every day here in Ghana that Muslims men freely marry Christian women, but the opposite is not allowed. A Christian man cannot marry a Muslim woman. Only, on, only when he is willing to convert to Islam. So this is one way that the Muslims are using to prevent uh, uh, depreciation in their number. They always want people to enter Islam, but they don't want people to leave Islam because when they, are, they allow the women to marry the Christian uh, man, the Christian may end up taking her to church. So they discourage that. Then the next agenda, the next strategy that they are using is ban of non-Muslim missionary activities in Islamic countries. Ban of non-Muslim missionary activities in Islamic countries. 
we are yet to see Christian missionaries who go to Saudi Arabia to preach Christ there. I'm yet to see Christian missionary activities in Iran. We may have some there, but those deaths are even doing it secretly. Officially, it is a, a crime for for Bible to be even for Bible to be imported to these countries. This people who don't want any non-Islamic system in their countries. Libya, Algeria, Egypt, even in northern Nigeria, Mali, uh, Cameroon, uh, Mali, Mauritania, those countries, Morocco, those known highly majority Muslim countries, uh, 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 don't allow for freedom of what? Worship. We have very few Christian population there, and even these people are not recognized uh, people. Most of these people worship in secret. And when they notify, then when they come to see you worshiping there, you may be uh, put to death. So I just spoke to one friend in Libya this uh, uh, this morning who told me that they don't have any church in Libya, so they don't go to church. They only listen to sermons on Facebook and maybe YouTube, but they, they don't have any church there in Libya because Islam forbids Muslim countries forbid the practice of Christianity in Muslim dominated world countries the next one the next one the next one is uh, uh, but, uh yes so we are looking at aggressive dawah against the beliefs of non-muslim in non islamic countries nigeria ghana come and see how muslims are on our street every day preaching against the bible preaching against jesus christ preaching against apostle paul preaching against our belief in the trinity preaching against our belief in the atonement of Christ, preaching against the deity of Christ. In our, in, our, in our territories, Muslims can sit at the radio station, on the television station, anywhere, open space, to lambast the Bible, to lambast Christianity, to ridicule our faith. This is one of their strategies in an Islamic world. Countries like in Ghana, Nigeria, when it comes to the southern part of Nigeria, I know Brother Kolobi, you are aware of this. Serious, aggressive dawah. By this man, uh, Adipoji also. Uh, this, uh, this, uh, yeah, this, uh, yeah, um, yeah. Look at Adipoji. this man. Yeah. Yeah, there are I've, lot never of seen, I've never seen him preaching Islam using only the Quran. Always is about the Bible. Always is about the Bible. And they are doing all this to bait Christians, Christians who are weak in their faith. To, to they are using all this to attract them to Islam. But even in this issue, when a Christian tries to do the same thing, the Muslims become offensive. The Muslims become offensive, and they want to they want to cause commotion in the country. So this is one of the strategies: lambasting of Christianity, preaching against the gospel of Christ, attacking the Christian faith, vehement dawah against Christianity is one of their agendas or strategies to bring up to bring up uh, this Islamization or agenda. Now, beside this, Brother Corridi, beside this modern day Islamization effort or plans or strategies, there are some attitudes uh, among we Christians that is aiding Muslims to achieve the agenda. And this is what I want to talk about in our next uh, slide. Attitude of Christians today that is uh, 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 helping Muslims to uh, work out the agenda. That's the next slide. So, number one, I would say ignorance about Islam among Christians ignorance about islam among christians and the christian here is every christian not just the, 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 the laity or the members the clergy themselves are very much ignorant about islam and this issue that came up in nigeria about the killing of uh, deborah come and see the comment of some christians about it come and see christians who are even defending the muslims saying that the lady should learn to respect other people's faith christians generally are ignorant about islam we don't know their faith we don't know their teachings we see islam to be just one of the religions in the world it's we, we sometimes evaluate islam as just a, 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 a sect of christianity no no and this because of this ignorance many christians that have converted to islam did so because they don't know anything about islam they don't know anything about islam they think that, oh, Christians and Muslims are worshipping the same God. Muhammad and Jesus are coming from the same God. They are all brothers. That is ignorance. And look at our theological seminaries. In, look at our Bible schools or theological seminaries. How many courses do we have on Islam? So preachers don't say anything about Islam. 
pastors don't know anything about Islam and we easily fall to their to their whims and their, their, their plans. You see, so that is an issue here. That is an issue. Then another issue that I want to talk about is fear of Muslims among Christians. Fear of Muslims among Christians. We have put some fear in our in, in our hearts. Yes, Muslims from history have been very violent. Uh, Islam has from from history is a very violent religion. That is not uh, to be denied. But this fear of Muslims or Islam has engulfed Christians so much so that Christians don't even want to talk about Islam. I now preach. I, I preach in one radio station here in Ghana every Saturday morning. And you, you, the first time that we are going to start that program, come and see the, the, the emotions. Hey, preacher, are you sure this is not going to bring issue? Are you sure these Muslims will not come and attack us? But the same radio station, we have a Muslim uh, of, of stars who preach there on Fridays, every Friday evening. This man preaches there, speak against Christianity, and no one has even think about, hey, this man, the way he preached against the Bible, won't he face some issues? But when we decided when we decided to go to that same radio station to also do our program there, our Christians were expressing some kind of fear. All because we have put some fear in us that Muslims are violent. And when you speak about them, they will come out and attack you. So much so that we should just leave Muslims alone. We, should, we shouldn't even talk about Muslims. Just go and preach about your Bible and your Jesus. But they can do so. And this attitude has engulfed ordinary Christians, the laity, and the clergy. And the clergy. Pastors, bishops, uh, big time Christians, big guys in the church, the big man for Christianity, we're all silent. We are not talking about Islam because we think when we speak about Islam, the Muslims will come and attack us. Then the next issue, the next attitude, Christian attitude that is aiding this Islamization agenda is our up, is absence of active Christian outreach ministries to Muslims. Absence of active Christian outreach ministries to Muslims. How many Christian missionaries? Uh, how many missionaries that we? Uh, uh, how many Christian missionary activities are towards the Muslims? We don't have we. We don't have some of these things even in our churches. So most of the evangelization that we are doing in Christianity today is to uh, like interdenominational uh, conversion, where a, a redeemed Christian church member try to convert a church of Pentecost member, where a, a Protestant or where a Methodist church member tries to convert a Baptist. So this is what we are. When we speak of evangelism, that is what most of us th uh, think of. So it is like we should just ignore the Muslims. So we are just speaking to our own selves, arguing uh, uh, among ourselves. But the real people that need the gospel of Christ, we ignore these people. The real people that need the saving message of the gospel, we don't even want to talk about them. We don't even want to talk about them. We don't have any serious ministry, Christian ministry, that is trying to reach out to the Muslims with the gospel. We don't have such thing. If in here in Ghana, I don't know of Nigeria, Nigeria, the 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 the, the, the few Christian ministry ministry that we have towards Muslims are even ministries that are independently funded. We don't have any church-based organization. The season apologist ministry, the love and Muslim ministry that we have in Nigeria. Um, ministry that, has, as far as I know, does not have any affiliation to a church. Even no, no church even want to affiliate with such ministries because they th they see this ministry to be co controversial ministries. So, over here in Ghana, Christian ministry to Muslims don't have any support among the churches because the the the, the, the leaders of the church have not been thought up of it. They have even they have they, they haven't thought of it. So that is one of the attitudes that Christians are exhibiting that is aiding Islam to take over most of this, uh, most of our lands or most of our countries. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about again, the next thing that I want to talk about again is failure of Christians to live out, out uh, their Christian worldview. But we call we have Muslims who are into politics. But you see, one problem with Christ, many Christians is that. When Christian become a politician, instead of the Christian to use that position, whatever position that he has gotten in politics or in education or in, in anywhere, instead of him to live out that Christian life or to live out that Christian worldview, to exhibit that Christian worldview, we just put that, those things there. We just segregate 
our being Christian from our uh, being in that position. So you have a whole Christian parliamentarian who would be campaign or speaking for this LGBT people that LGBT is good, we should go for it. We have a whole Christian leader or politician who because of politics will sacrifice his Christian faith just, just to win political support. And this is something that Muslim don't do. When a Muslim become a, 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 a president or an MP, that position that he has gotten he ensures that he uses the position to promote Islam. He tries to use that position to promote Islam. And this is what something that Christians are not doing. This is something that the Christians are not doing. So we need to change from that. But the call, they let me uh, put on my power. It seems my battery is trying to get down. So let me put on my power. I'll just, uh, I'll be back very soon. All right, that's noted, Brackman, sir. All right, so folks, um, if you have your question right about now, please, I want you to begin to put your questions um, in the comment section. I only have about two of them or so. So uh, we're, we're not going to be reviewing comments. That is the reason why we allowed you to put in your questions. If you want to put in your question, type your question in capital letters, and then you can actually put in your question right there. So once the question is there, Brackman, sir, I'll be able to review the question. Um, in about five minutes from now, Brakwansa will be able to begin to take the questions that you have put in there so far. So, Brakwansa, um, I think you have five minutes left to wrap up, and then yeah. we'll begin to take yeah, the questions yeah, that I've yeah. yeah. Okay, you can go ahead. Yes. So, uh, all that I want to say is that this attitude of Christians, we are by this attitude helping the Muslims to just infiltrate us with this agenda. We are by this attitude making Muslims still true with this worldwide Islamization agenda. So this is the attitude that, uh, this is our attitude that is aiding in this Islamization agenda. Now let me talk about uh, one final thing, then we draw the curtain for the whole show. Uh, is uh, how should we respond to this worldwide Islamization agenda? I've said so many things about Islamization efforts in the past, Islamization efforts in the modern times, attitude of Christians that is aiding in this Islamization agenda. The last thing is, what are my solutions or proposals? What are some of the things that as Christians we can do to counter this, uh, this threat to Christianity? What are some of the things that we can do? So let's look at some of those things. That is prayer. The first thing is prayer. We can't eliminate prayer in this because uh, we are told in the New Testament, in the book of Ephesians, that uh, 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 we are not resting against flesh and heart. Lord, Islam is not just <laughs> a, a, a religion. Islam has a spiritual dimension. In fact, to me, immediately a Muslim recites a shahada. A, a certain spirit uh, possesses that Muslim. Islam it's a religion that deals has so many spiritual as, uh, aspects. For instance, when the Muslims are praying, the the, the, the direction is Ka, the, the Kaaba. They have to face the direction of the Kaaba in Mecca. Every year they have to go to the Mecca to circumambulate that Kaaba. And to me, we all know that oh, before, yeah. before Islam, that Kaaba was a temple. Was 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 was, was, was a pagan temple. And to me, that still that paganism is still attached to Islam. So immediately a Muslim recite the Shahada. That spirit of the Kaaba possesses the Muslim. That, that Antichrist spirit, that Antichrist spirit that worked in Muhammad to, to, for him to renounce, for him to speak against the gospel, for him to deny the deity of Christ, the atonement of Christ, the integrity of the Bible, the, 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 the doctrine of the triune, uh, triune nature of God, this spirit infiltrates the Muslim, it possesses the Muslim. And the only way that we can effectively make sense to the Muslim is for us to put those Muslims into prayer. Ask the Lord to touch the heart of the Muslims. We need to take this thing to prayer. Because the Bible says, with prayer, we can confront the enemy. So that's the first thing is prayer. We need to pray against this agenda. Because when this agenda materializes in any country, you don't have your freedom. You can't even gather on Sunday to worship your Lord because of this terrorist. 
Now, the next thing is that education on Islam. Yes, we need to pray, but not just prayer. But we need to also educate ourselves on Islam. What is Islam? What are, what are their beliefs? So, any pastor watching me, if you're a pastor, if you're a preacher watching me, throughout the year, the problem that you draw for the church, do you include lessons about what Christians can know about Islam, how Christians are to relate to Muslims, uh, what, how Christians can even preach the gospel to the Muslims, or ours is always uh, 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 teachings on other doctrines of the Bible. I'm not saying that that is, that's not good, but we live in a world where uh, we have a great number of people who are Muslims, and we need to learn about these Muslims. We need to know what they believe, why they speak against Christianity. Like Paul did in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse uh, 19 to 21. Paul says that he became like a Jew to the Jew. To those who were under the law, he became like a person under the law. To those without the law, he became a such. All that he might win all these people to Christ. So we need to educate ourselves on Islam. So Christian theological seminaries, West Africa theological seminary, uh, the Trinity Theological Seminary here in Ghana, and every theological seminary that we have in Ghana or in, everywhere in the world, is about time that we include courses on Islam. Christian apologetic to Islam, we need to include such courses so that this, by the time the minister graduates from the institution, he's well grounded on how to confront this Islam's uh, attack on Christianity. So education on Islam is very, very important. Then, number three, doing away with fear of Muslims. Yes, we know Islam by nature is violent, but that, doesn't, that does not mean that Muslims are all violent. No, we have many Muslims who are very peaceful. But when we allow this peaceful or moderate Muslims to be radicalized, to be more, to be more Islamized, we ignore them. We don't want to even get, get close to them with the gospel. When we allow these people to read more of their texts, become more Islamized or radicalized, these this so-called moderate or peaceful Muslims will turn out to come and attack us one day. So we should do away with that fear. And the Muslims are violent. We shouldn't even talk about that. No. From my own experience, when you get closer to the Muslims, they are very peaceful people. We should take the gospel of Christ to them. We shouldn't just assume that every Muslim is a terrorist or violent. No. Even though that is what the religion can make them to be, but that doesn't mean that every Muslim is living by that teaching of the Quran. Now, the next thing I want to talk about, the next thing I want to talk about, besides doing away with fear, is we must have Christian apologetics and outreach ministries to Muslims. So, for me, I have been impacted a lot by Love and Muslim Ministry in Nigeria, Evangelist Isam Odu Akaga. Whatever I am doing today as a Christian apologist is by his intervention. When I met him in 2014, I, I, I had one of his CDs that was given to me by a Muslim who was my friend. Evangelist came to Ghana to do a debate in 2011. In, uh, so in 2014, I got this CD of Evangelist Isam where he debated one Asari, one as a Muslim scholar called Asari, at the National Theatre in Ghana. I saw, I watched this debate, who's the promised comforter. And that was my first time of seeing a Christian who can quote the Quran, who can quote the Quran. And I love the way Evangelist did his presentation. And I said, I need to get in touch with this man. Because in those days, I Muslims were just bullying me, attacking me, and I don't know the answers. And I got in touch with Evangelist Isan. And in the year 2014, when Zachary Knight came to Ghana here, Evangelist Isan decided to come to Ghana here. And I got in touch with him. He said I should meet him in Accra. And this is where I got in touch with Love and Muslim Heart Ministry. And eventually, I remember that day, and the day before Evangelist was to come to Ghana, I lost his contact. I had a problem with my phone, and I, I sent a message to Brother Corridi. And you brought a call today, responded to that message. And evangelist came to meet me in Ghana here and went to the Airwax Center to meet Dr. Zappi Knight. We asked our question, and that is where my apologetic career had started. So I've been blessed a lot by Love and Muslim Ministry. 
and all that you people do in Nigeria. You came together here for several debate programs and tours. I was part with the, I was a part of the interact. I was watching how Evangelos was asking questions, debating tactics. I copied some of most of these things, and today I can also debate Muslims. So I thank God for bringing this ministry to Ghana. I'm blessed here. Uh, I, 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 I'm a product of Evangelist Isang Odwakaga and the Love and Muslim Hot Ministry. I'm one of their product here in Ghana. I'm, I, I, I'm what I am today because of their ministry, their impact in my life. So we must have Christian apologetic ministries. But the sad thing is that the churches are not supporting. Mm. The churches are not supporting. They see us to be controversial. They see Christian apologetic ministries, especially ministries that are pro, uh, that are towards Muslim to be, con to be controversial ministries. So, so the churches don't want to associate themselves with these ministries. Mm -hmm. But they are not doing anything to about this uh, issue that we are talking about. So we must have serious outreach ministries. So like this uh, season apologies ministry that you are running is very, very important. Just think of the number of Christians all over the country, all over the world who are benefiting from this lecture that we are having. But it's so sad that we don't have people sponsoring. So if you're a Christian watching, if you're a pastor watching, in you are in Nigeria, you have to sponsor Brother Korodi Olawanye, this ministry that he's having every Sunday, giving teaching that we don't hear in the churches, we don't hear in the pulpits. Eh? Be the head and not the tail. These are the sermon that we are hearing in our churches nowadays. <laughs> do well. Yeah. And make a if you want to do this one, these messages don't make a person a strong Christian. We, mm. live, we live in an era where the attack on the gospel is so much that many of our youth are living the faith. And it's about time churches must be apologetically oriented. Seminaries, Bible colleges should have courses that will ground ministers or seminarians in apologetics. We must have conferences. We, have, we, 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 have, we must have lectures, seminars for pastors and church leaders on apologetics. We must include sermons on Islam, sermons on how we, we can defend the faith. Attacks that Muslims are raising against the deity of Christ, against the inspiration of the Bible, against the Trinity, against the atonement. We must have these teachings in our pulpits, not just these human centered sermons. You be the head and not the tail. Enough of that, my dear pastor. If you are watching, my dear preacher, if you are watching, this is what we must do in our context. If we fail to do this, just as Islam took over almost all the Bible land, the same issue will happen to us. Mm. The same plight will happen to us. May God forbid. Uh, next... bro, bro, so we have just about um, um, about um, seven minutes to round up everything. Uh, yes, yes, yes. And, and, and I'm just yeah. wrapping up. And I'm okay, just wrapping right. up. So, then we should also speak against pro-Islamic government policy. Any policy that we have in any country, when the government is used, uh, uh, bringing any pol policy that, that, is un uh, that is going to give undue advantage to Muslims, we should speak against those policies. Come, come to Ghana here. Every year, the government sponsors the Muslim to Ghana, uh, the government sponsors the Muslim to the Yahaj, to Maka. Something which is purely a religious uh, 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 something, you, you, you see government, both the current government and the previous government sponsoring this Islamic uh, policies. This is something that we Christians must speak against. Ghana is a secular country, and a secular country shouldn't be sponsoring a, one particular religion. So this is something that we should do. I know the same thing is in Nigeria, where Government spends money on uh, Muslims every year for their hajj. It is very, it is very hard that we should speak about. The politician, the Christian politician, will not speak against it because of the vote that they will lose from the Muslims. But we shouldn't do that. The last one, living out our Christian conviction in all spheres of life. If we're a Christian, the position that you've gotten in the bank, in the politics, in the education, you must use that position to promote Christianity. You must use that position to promote Christ. Don't leave your Christian faith somewhere that. I'm a Christian when I go to church, but when I come to when I go to my work, I'm not a Christian. This is something that Muslims will never do. This is something that the Muslims will never do. I know in Nigeria, the government even uses money to build mosques, and no one complains, no Muslim will complain. Christians, we should use whatever privilege, opportunity that the Lord has given us to promote his name in that particular uh, area. So, my brother, this is where I will uh, draw the curtain for today. But my final comment, in my conclusion, this is what I want to say, conclusion. That's going to be my, this is going to be my, my final words. 
my final uh, word that I want to leave out to my viewers is this in the conclusion. That's the last slide. Okay, all right. <laughs> Even though you can move it yourself, anyway. <laughs> yes, so I, 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 want to, I want to read that one. Our God is in control of every affair of history, including Islam's agenda. Our God is in control. We should do our part and leave the rest into his sovereign hand and providence. See? The, the last one. Amen. The last one. But one thing we are sure of is this. The church of Jesus Christ can never be defeated by Satan. Jesus said in Matthew 16, 18, the gate of Hades can never destroy or overcome the whole the church. Amen. We believe that no matter what Islam will do, there will still be Christians who will be faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ until his second coming, where he will come and take us home for us to spend eternity with him in heaven. Remember, the purpose of this lecture is not for you to hate the Muslim. This lecture should cause you to love the Muslim. You don't have a Muslim friend. Try to get a Muslim friend. Let's all do our best by preaching Christ to the Muslims, learning how to li live in peace with the Muslims, responding to their attacks against the gospel, and also challenging their beliefs by providing counter charges that they also level against our faith. When this is done, in our own small way, we can help to stem the tide of this worldwide Islamization agenda. Remember, the Lord God is in control. The Church of Christ will never or can never be defeated by the sword of Muhammad. The cross of Christ can never be defeated by the sword of Muhammad. God bless you for your time and may you be prosperous in wherever you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you very much for that, Brock Ponsat. That was a very beautiful presentation. And folks, if you are just joining us today for the last episode, you might want to check out uh check us uh or check out our YouTube page also on Facebook where we actually uh talked about the first and the second episode. We have the episode one, that's part one, we have part two, and also we have part three as well. All right, so this is the part three that we're having right now. Just for you to make a sense of what I've been said so far, you, you might want to watch it from the very beginning to this particular point. Thank you very much, Brafon, sir. So you didn't just talk about the problem. You didn't talk, just talk about the agenda. You also talk about how Christians should actually respond to uh, the agenda as well. I, I believe um, that's actually a very good one. And then if you're a Christian listening to this, yes, you know how we can respond, uh, respond to the uh, worldwide Islamic or the Islamization agenda as well. So because of time, Brad Ponsar, so we have just a minute to go. Uh, we, we, we'll be able to take about a minute, yeah? Uh, so, sorry, a question, <laughs> not a minute. Uh, we'll be able to take a question. And yes, here is a question from uh, Muslim Islamic Godric Conte. And the question is asking right here, um, is that question, if everybody converted to Islam, does it mean that you are going to heaven? Um, I don't know what um, it means by, does it mean you're going to heaven? Maybe... Uh, it meant that the Muslims are going to heaven or the Christians are going to heaven. So, uh, bro, Moses, uh, probably you might want to uh, give you a clarification. Brock, do you really understand the later part of that question? Oh, maybe he, he didn't even get what I was saying. We are not in this lecture saying that Islam is the path to salvation. Islam, from my Christian perspective, is not the right path. It is not a true religion that will take man to heaven. Islam, to me, is a satanic religion. Uh, it's a false religion that if we allow anyone to enter, that person is dead. So yeah. uh, the right part to salvation is Christ Jesus. Come to Jesus, believe in him, and you'll be saved. Amen. Thank you very much. Uh, so, folks, because of time, we will not be able to go further than this. I want to make sure that we keep it to uh, the time that we are having for, you know, <laughs> For actually today but then we really want to appreciate everyone who's been on the show right from the very beginning till now uh our dear brother uh akinship or m rahim we can see your comment in the section um you would have asked a question if you wanted but you did not ask a question you're just putting a comment but we were actually looking for your question but again again want to appreciate everyone who's been on the show um right from the very beginning even till now I want to thank you also want to especially thank uh dominica thank you very much 
uh, for coming on the show. We really, really want to thank you. And so, folks, if you want to connect with our dear brother, he runs a YouTube channel. All right, he runs a YouTube channel. Also, um, it can be found on Facebook as well. So right now, if you are checking the comment section, the link to Brad Consa's YouTube channel uh, and his Facebook profile has been sent right there. All right, so um, he runs um, the Truth Ex the Truth Exposed Apologetic Network. All right, Truth Exposed Apologetic Network. That is actually um, the uh, YouTube page that uh, Brad Consa runs. Okay, so you want to make sure that you connect with him right there on Facebook and also on um, on YouTube as well. Okay, all right, so. That's that about that. Also, if you want to um, ask him question, um, the link to his uh, Facebook page has also been uh, uh, posted in the comment section and will be also posted in uh, the description also as well. All right. So if you want to link with him, you want to ask him question. Yes, you can actually do that. So we're going to be wrapping up for now. But then I won't wrap up without we um, giving you a couple of information uh, that will be relevant. So Lord willing, um, this um, this week, yeah. This week, uh, I've, I've actually been invited to a program that um, Equa in the Butemeta is putting together. I'm going to be talking about um, apologetics right there. Um, I'm going to be talking about two topics um, um, specifically. Uh, the one on um, if the, the Christians are the Muslim, do we worship the same God? Okay, so that's one of the topics we're going to be topic talking about. And then the second one is on apologetics. Okay, how can we do apologetics um, in this particular age and time? And that program is actually what you're seeing on the screen right now. It's going to be taking place on the uh, June, uh, the second to the June, uh, the fifth of, of um, yeah, June. Okay, so that's next month, and it's going to be it's going to be by 6 p.m. daily. All right, and um, the program is going to be live stream as well. So the link to that program, uh, that's the live stream, will be sent or uh, will be displayed on the Season Apology channel this week. So you want to make sure that you watch out for that. All right. Also, um, to remind you again, we are going to be having um, a program coming up, especially for those who are interested in, um, you know, ministering to the Muslims and all that. So there's a program that is coming up. It is called the Lay Institute, all right? It's actually organized by um, a theological seminary and um, is actually going to be a two-weeks program. So if you're interested, I'm going to learn how to uh, minister to the Muslims. You are passionate for Muslims and all that. Then you want to make sure that you are... Uh, register for this program you can actually inbox us or send us a message we're going to be displaying our content information at the end of uh, the show we want to make sure that you send us a message and they will give you further details um, about this program as well also just want to remind you guys that lord willing on the 23rd yeah lord willing i say on the 23rd of um, july we're going to be having the season apologies conference okay so the season apologies conference is actually a yearly conference that we have okay on um oh how do i put it now yeah <laughs> it's actually a yellow program that we have um in lagos uh, we've not we've not really had it outside of lagos yet but we usually have it in lagos okay and um this particular this year's episode is going to be very interesting because we're going to be talking about um you know interesting stuff apologetics you know doing apologetics in africa and all of those things but a uh, lot willing this week the information about um the uh, conference will be coming up all right the information about the conference will be coming up. So you want to make sure that you actually um, stick around. Make sure you stick to the show. And they will be able to give you more information about um, the conference. All right. So also, um, Lord willing, this um, evening, uh, that is by 7 p.m. Nigerian time. All right. 7 p.m. Nigerian time. Um, I'm going to be joining um, Bra... Uh, <laughs> bra... Uh, oh God, bra Fulari, yeah. I'm going to be joining Barafolari today, Lord willing. Barafolari is going to be hosting um, a program online because, you know, Barafolari actually runs a uh, Yoruba version of the apologetic program, okay? So it does, you know, what basically what it does, it has a, a, a Facebook and YouTube channel. Uh, it calls it um, Fatu Kodoro, all right? So what it does basically there is that it does apologetics in the Yoruba language, all right? So this evening, uh, this night, as the case may be, uh, Lord willing, um, I'm going to be on that channel. I'm going to be on that same um, show. And we're going to be talking about, you know, the different version of the Quran. You know, the Muslims have already been telling us that um, there is only one version of the Quran. But Lord willing, um, by 7 p.m. Um, on his show, all right, we're going to be talking about a di different version of the Quran. Yeah, we're going to be talking about that. So if you want to actually um, listen to that particular program, yes, you can join in. Now, it's going to be in Yoruba language. <laughs> so if you don't understand Yoruba, sorry. 
you will not understand what we are going to be discussing, all right? But I want to promise you that we're going to be having the English version of that program as well, okay? So this is just the Yoruba version we're having right now, but uh, Lord willing, in the nearest future, we're going to be having the English version of the program as well. So again, uh, the title of the program is Path to Kodoro, all right? Path to Kodoro, that's the, um, the, um, the YouTube channel and also the Facebook um, page. So you want to make sure that you stick to that as we're going to be talking about this important issue. And as a way of information, uh, the banner to that particular program, this uh, part of the where we're going to be talking about the different version of the Quran, um, is actually what um, will be displayed to you on the screen right now. Okay, so this is just it. So Lord willing, by 7 p.m. Nigerian time um, today, um, I'm going to be on the Brafalari's channel, and we're going to be talking about does the Quran have versions, all right? So do we have different versions of the Quran? This is exactly what we're going to be talking about. Again, it's going to be in the Yoruba language, so it's not going to be English. I'm speaking English right now, but in that particular program, we're going to be talking about um, this um, issue in the English language. Again, I want to thank and appreciate uh, Brak Mosa once again. Now, if you want to contact us, okay, here is our contact information. We are actually social. You can contact us. We are right there on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram, and also on WhatsApp. On Facebook, we are Season Apologies. So if you want to contact us on Facebook, we are Season Apologies. And also, if you want to contact us on um, Instagram, again, we are also at Season Apologies on Instagram. Now, also, if you want to contact us on um, YouTube, okay, so for YouTube also, we are seasoned apologies, okay, so that's actually very interesting because, you know, we, we're all over the place because we want to make sure that the message actually gets to um, a lot of people as, as much as we can, all right? Also, if you want to reach out to us on um, our Twitter, yes, we are season A on Twitter, so if you want to reach out to us on Twitter, we are at season A, okay? Also, if you want to send us a message, you can actually send a message actually on WhatsApp, okay? So our WhatsApp number is uh, plus 234-8127-999591. That's plus 234 if you're actually trying to reach us out of Nigeria. That's plus 234-8127-999591. If you are within Nigeria, so what you can just do is to do 8127, okay? 0-8127-999591, okay? All right, if you want to um, support us, okay? You want to support what we're doing, um, either financially or through human resources or whichever way, you can actually do that by going to www.seasonapologies.com forward slash support. That is how you can actually get to support what we do. Also, if you want to check out our website, you can actually do that by going to www.seasonapologies.com. You can actually read up some articles and see some of the things that we do and you know want to know more about us. You can actually go right there. If you want to send us an email, you can actually do that by going to um, you know info at seasonapologies.com. You can actually send your message or send us a message at info at teasingapologies.com. Again, that is info at teasingapologies.com. All right, so this is how far we can go today. Again, thank you very much for everyone who's been able to join us on the program. Also, special thanks to Brock Monsan. So folks, please, if you're in Ghana, make sure you contact Brock Monsan. Make sure you join him. Make sure you support him and strengthen the ministry that God has given to him. Also, um, for the, the folks that are watching us right now, please, wanted to um, hold, have upheld us with your prayer, continually praying for us. Uh, for everyone who's actually ministering to the Muslims um, all over the world, pray for them, pray for the ministry the Lord has given to them, pray for their family, and also pray for their business because, you know, some of us are not really doing this thing full time. Uh -huh. All right, so just uh, pray for us that the Lord will strengthen us and help us as well. All right, so this is how far we can go for today. Again, thank you very much. God bless you. Uh, we're going to be coming your way next week, Lord willing. Uh, but till then, I want you to remain um, safe. I want you to remain strong. Thank you very much. Bye for now. My, remains, my name remains Corey Delaway, and them see you next week. We love you, Lord. We love you, Father. We give you all the glory. You are my. My strength and my trust in you I live and move and have my be. You are my shelter, my peace and my shield. You are my everything. You are worthy to be praised.